Welcome into the Michigan Football Report. I'm your host, James Yoder, on location, back where I grew up. And I just watched this Michigan game that almost got away from them. It looked like this team was in uh, control early on. We're going to do a lot of things for this show, but I do want to ask you to subscribe. We've had a ton of subscribers over the last week, week and a half. Uh, we're at 14,696 now, and we need 304 to go to get to 15,000 by the end of the month. So five days left after today. Please help us get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, if you enjoy the show, subscribe to the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports. It is my Michigan Football Report instant reaction for Michigan's 20 to 13 win over uh, Rutgers in a game that, again, they had their first quarter, it looked like Michigan was on pace for about a 42 to 10 win. So I ask you guys to get it started. Give me your one word reaction to Michigan's 20 to 13 win over Rutgers in Ann Arbor, game four of the year. The number 19 Wolverines advanced to 4 0 in the year. Um, and I frankly, it didn't look good. So I'm going to go with um, troublesome, right? I'm troubled by a lot of things I saw. The defense after Josh Ross got hurt, the offense. Um, really when they put the ball into Cade McNamara's hands and really Josh Gass's play calling didn't make any sense at all. So it's Michigan football versus Rutgers. Let's talk about what we have learned about this program four games in the one third of the way through the season. And I think a lot has changed. The offensive game plan that worked for the first three weeks is completely gone, at least was today. And Cade McNamara certainly isn't the guy I think who we hoped he could grow into. So is it back to reality for you, for me, for fans everywhere in this program, for this coaching staff, for these players? Did they get a little too cocky? Did they look ahead? If you watched the videos the last couple of days, I've said, look, this is a classic look ahead game, but I didn't think Jim Harbaugh would let him look ahead. But it certainly seemed like that was happening uh, on the program, the field today. So my first thing I learned today, Josh Gass is terrible. I'm trying not to be negative about the guy. I'm trying not to call for another man's job, all that good stuff, but – I thought Josh Gass has been bad the entire time he's been in Michigan. And Jim Harbaugh retooled this entire staff in the offseason. Got seven new coaches in here. Um, yet Josh Gass, probably the worst performing member of the staff, uh, got to keep his job. And frankly, I think he got, you know, got an extension, which I didn't understand. I guess maybe it was for recruiting purposes. I'm not sure if there's any buyout clause. But Josh Gass is terrible. Michigan with 44 yards of offense in the second half. Folks, as you heard me, 40 four yards of offense in the second half and didn't even get a first down in the second half until that final drive after the Rutgers uh, uh, turnover. So it was it was pretty disappointing um, by this Michigan offense all game. They played pretty terrible. K. McMara, 9 of 16, 163 yards, 10.2 yards per attempt. Okay. But I don't know if he was the same after that targeting play early on uh, first half where the Rutgers defender went there's maybe like two minutes left in the first half as Michigan was going down uh, for the, you know, they didn't go for it inside the five and wasted a couple of timeouts. If you follow me on Twitter, you saw me uh, talking about that in my halftime Twitter video. But after that, Kate McNamara didn't seem to be the same. Maybe they got him in the head. Maybe he was a little woozy. Maybe he was shaken up. But I think Jim Harbaugh and Josh Gass and the offensive staff had the opportunity to recognize that. And maybe put J.J. McCarthy in the game. Because after that, he really played terrible, folks. He really played bad, played terrible all throughout the second half. He skipped passes. Uh, later on that drive, I mean, there was a guy wide open in the end zone and he threw a loon screwmaker, you know, just threw it completely out of his uh, out of his reach. And then the entire, that was right before halftime. And then the entire second half, Michigan struggled on offense, 44 yards of offense. He played terrible. And Michigan had three straight three and outs in uh, the third quarter and into the fourth quarter in the second half. So after that injury, really struggled, missed the uh, the wide open wide receiver, and then Michigan just looked terrible in the second half. I think it's time for a new quarterback, or at least give J.J. McCarthy a shot. 4-0 record, probably in the top 15, 16, 17 after this week. But I don't think that Cade McNamara has proven enough, or really, if anything, that he can get this team to championship level, to compete with Ohio State. Ohio State's put in their true freshman quarterback. It was really about the same as J.J. McCarthy, top 25, top 30 player in the country, you know, the number three and four quarterbacks, whatever it was last year, both five stars. I think it's time for to Michigan to at least give J.J. McCarthy a chance because I know there was a handful of plays there that came back and to skip the ball off the ground or completely threw it out of the guy's grasp that J.J. McCarthy would most likely have hit. But let you guys, let you guys answer here. Who should be Michigan's QB1, the starting quarterback for Jim Harbaugh's Wolverines in year seven at the school? I think it's J.J. McCarthy. I think it should be. 
Um, maybe you give Kate McNamara one more game, two more games at most. Uh, you win on Wisconsin. If you look good, okay, he's proven himself. But if not, I think it's time for J.J. McCarthy. So not next week necessarily, but if you think it's Kate McNamara, keep rolling with him until uh, he proves otherwise consistently. Type C for K. And Michigan did not cover the spread for the first time this year, but – you can win money on your NFL teams. You can have some fun tomorrow or tonight. Get going if you watch this on Saturday night. Want to bet some late games. A lot of good games coming up uh, tonight in the next you know hour or so. Or maybe even start it by the time you're watching this video. Do it with our sports partner, BetUS. Put money down on NFL games tomorrow. Have some fun if you want to. Play responsibly. But get 125% deposit bonus if you do with BetUS. Go to chatsports.com slash go blue. Promo code go blue when you deposit 125%. Bonus. So go ahead and get started. If you want to bet in game responsibly, use BetUS, our preferred and trusted sports book partner. The defense, he really fell apart without Josh Ross. He was hurt you know, right before half, and it was like a whole different game, ball game. Rutgers came out and moved the ball, I don't want to say at will, but it felt like at will at times in the second half. I wanted to glance somewhere here I had. Uh, at halftime, Rutgers had 121 yards at half. In the game, they ended with 352. So they had three, you know, 221 yards in the second half. To sorry, 331, 231 yards in the second half compared to Michigan's 44. So 231 to Michigan's 44 in the second half. That is pretty shocking. Um, so the defense fell apart without Josh Ross, and it looked for a time that Rutgers not only might score, then they missed that field goal that could have put the game within four points. Um, I thought they were going to score and tie the game there and had all the momentum to potentially get the ball back and take the lead. But then Rutgers did get the ball back after Michigan missed a field goal and they turned the ball over. And that was all that she wrote. But the read option offense uh, from Rutgers really baffled Michigan's D for big portions of the second half. And that's something they've definitely got to work on going to this game against Wisconsin. A Wisconsin team that lost 41 to 13 in a fairly close game early on, but Notre Dame just was pouring it on there in the last uh, five, six, eight minutes of the game. So Michigan will head to Wisconsin on Saturday and the offense has to improve. So talk a little more on this Michigan offense. I didn't like what I saw Josh Gass runs and several times on third and long. I didn't get in there. Terrible play calling in the red zone. You only really ran two running plays all game, kind of like off tackle, off guard one way, off tackle, off guard the other way. Feel that felt like very uh, average running plays and not much running strategy for this team throughout the second half. 15 runs on the first drive, and then they stopped running. It was just shocking performance by this team. So I don't think Josh Gaddis can get it done. I don't think he's the right guy. I've said all offseason I wouldn't be surprised by the fourth or fifth or sixth game this year if he didn't get relieved of his duties. But like Ohio State did it last week to their defensive coordinator. And Michigan should maybe consider it for their offensive coordinator, Matt Weiss. Sure, more. Mike Carr, Jim Harbaugh himself probably would do a better job than what I've seen of gas in nearly you know two and a half years as Michigan's D offensive coordinator. Blake Corum, 21 carries, 68 yards, 3.2 yards per carry. Didn't get a lot done. Hassan Haskins, 12 carries for only 41 yards. So those two guys combined and basically getting 100 yards every game, they barely got 100 combined. Two touchdowns early on for Hassan Haskins. Want to make sure you guys, though, subscribe. We're at just under 14,700 subscribers. Need 304 more to get to 15,000. Would really appreciate it if you subscribe. Uh, we're putting out Michigan football videos every single day and fast as we can right after the Michigan football games every Saturday. Next up, Michigan was outrushed by Rutgers, 196 to 112. That's troubling. Michigan rushed for over 230 yards below their season average. They were number one in the country coming into this game. I doubt they'll hold that uh, – that you know ranking after only getting 112 yards against Rutgers. So this is a tough game coming up against Wisconsin. I'm interested to see how this team reacts to adversity because every time they, they face adversity today, outside of that last defensive turnover, they didn't stand up to the challenge. Michigan's wide receivers, once again, non-existent today. Uh, I'll read a couple stats off for you. Mike Sanders stole one catch for 51 yards. We all saw that play. It was a pretty good play. Um, Roman Wilson, one for 38. So some big plays there, but nothing consistent. Cornelius Johnson, two for 33. Um, and then Dalen Baldwin, one for seven. One of the other guys to catch passes, Eric All, two for 23, the tight end, and Blake Corum, two for 11. So Michigan's wide receivers haven't really done anything all year outside of Ronnie Bell and, and Cornelius Johnson in you know, the first half or so against uh, Western Michigan in the opener. Passing game remains to be awful. I can't stress enough how bad Cade McNamara looked in the second half. And I really think there needs to be a continued open com competition. 
and open conversation amongst the coaching staff on whether Cade McNamara can beat the teams that are coming up in the schedule in the next, you know, six, seven weeks. You've got Wisconsin, you got Nebraska, you got Michigan State, you got Penn State, you got Northwestern. You know, maybe that's an easy win. I'm not sure. But uh, right now it is on to Wisconsin, um, Michigan, Wisconsin next Saturday uh, up in um, in Camp Randall. One note, though, before we go, and Jake Moody missed that 46 yard field goal right uh, at the end there for Michigan, could have him up 10, uh, gave Rutgers another chance, which they didn't do anything with, turned the ball over. But that was potentially could have been the play of the game. I hope Jake Moody, you know, there could be a time this season later on this year where that's not a field goal to go up 10 points. That potentially is a field goal to win or lose a game. So he's got to make those going forward. That uh, that could have been the difference today. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to, I'm going to fly back uh, from where I'm at now, back to Dallas, where I live, and do uh, land in the morning, like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And I'm going to go straight in and make a Michigan football overreaction Saturday. I'm going to watch some film on the plane tomorrow. And I have a video from so overreaction Sunday. I'll have a video for you on Sunday. So until then, thanks for watching, and go blue.